Welcome to the Soap Thing Project. Let's talk for a moment about fine accoutrements. More specifically, this shaving soap right here. Do you remember this? This is the original fine accoutrements shaving soaps. For those of you who have not been in the hobby that long, they used to be a hard puck and they used to be made in the Netherlands. Tallow based soap, triple milled puck, I think is what they were, three and a half ounces. And they looked exactly like this. In fact, mine still has Mr. Fine stenciled onto the front of it. I have not used this for the first time. It's still a fairly uh, greasy, moist shaving soap. And the scent strength on this is wonderful. Still hanging in there after all this time of it being discontinued. These got discontinued a while ago. Whenever I did a shave video involving fine lavender pour homme in the early stages of the soap thing project people would just be coming at me asking you know where did i get it and how can they get their hands on some well unfortunately it was too late uh if you didn't get back up by uh, pucks and aftershaves you were pretty much screwed by the time i uh, i came around and started uh really getting heavy into doing shave videos but there is an alternative if you are somebody who is really missing this scent quite dearly, there is an alternative. It's not a very good one in terms of uh, availability and price, but it is an alternative nonetheless. It turns out that Fine Lavender Pour Homme is a scent dupe. For those of you who did not know, it was a scent dupe of this, Check and Speak Oxford and Cambridge. This is the shaving soap version of a designer fragrance. This is 3.1 ounces. It's a tallow-based soap. I'm going to do a shave with this today. This is unfortunately not easy to get. Uh, the easiest I've been able to find it is off of websites in the UK. So you're going to have to pay international shipping if you're outside the UK. And this is 28 pounds for 3.1 ounces of soap, so pretty steep in terms of price already. Now, it's probably triple milled, and somebody's going to argue it's going to last forever, but even still, the upfront cost is a little steep. But this is the alternative. Why is it the alternative? Well, because this is the scent that fine accoutrements, lavender pour homme, is derived from. This is the original scent. So I'm going to do a shave with it, and we're going to talk about it, and we're going to compare how closely these two smell to each other. That's going to be the shaving soap for today. The aftershave, I don't have a lavender scented aftershave, so Mirsol Plastique it is. This is kind of a hair salon, fruity floral sort of thing. Not exactly the most masculine thing in the world, but hey... I really enjoy using it, so I'm going to use it with this. Moving on to the razor, I am going to, once again, use the Parker Solo Edge. This is a half DE razor. It takes half double-edge blades. I currently have a second-use Gillette Silver Blue already split into the razor. This is a razor that I have to be careful with. This is not an autopilot razor. This is not an an amateur razor. It's not a razor for beginners. This is one where you have to pay attention. So we'll see how good of a shave I can get with this. And the brush is going to be this Shave Mac 22 millimeter. This is a blue pearl handle with a finest badger on it. 22 millimeter. Okay, let's do a shave. All right, let's open this thing up. See what we have here. And the soap looks exactly like this. Check and speak, Oxford and Cambridge. There's the other side of it. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. Oh, fancy. And the scent is <laughs> exactly the same as Fine Accoutrements Lavender Pour Homme, if a little bit stronger even. It 
Actually, it is 95% similar. I would say this is a little, this is the puck, by the way. Check and speak, Oxford and Cambridge. Look how cool that is. I almost don't want to lather on top of that because that is just too cool. Okay, let me make sure, well, I let my iPhone cheat sheet go dead. I really need to put that on a different timer. Anyway, so smelling it, I would say the biggest difference between these two is that this is a little bit more dense smelling versus the fine lavender pour -home is slightly fresher, but it's still like 90 plus percent similar in my personal opinion. Okay. Oh man, I hate to ruin that. Isn't that beautiful? But you gotta do it. So I'm gonna take the brush, the uh, Shave Mac brush with the finest badger. I'm gonna get the tips wet just a little bit. I rang all the water out of it. I just want the tips a little bit more wet to start with. And I'm just gonna start working this on top of the soap just while it's sitting on my hand. Uh, I don't tend to soak or bloom pucks because in my experience, I don't need to. I get a perfectly fine lather without doing that. So, just gonna lather this on top of the soap. Get a little bit of water going. Hope everybody's doing well, having great shaves, great shaving tools, and great shaving soap, such as hopefully this uh, Check and Speak Oxford and Cambridge is gonna be some good stuff. I'm gonna err on the side of kind of a pasty lather off of this, and then add water as I go. Just dab that right into the water right there. There we go, a little bit more. Dab it right underneath the water. And as you can see, we're already getting some fairly thick suds. It might not lather up as quickly and easily as Saponificio Veracino or even Leah shaving pucks. Leah is crazy. Uh, for a shaving soap that's that inexpensive, I cannot believe how good it performs. A little bit more water. And then I'm gonna bring this to the face. Okay, um, on the outsides of the brush, it looks like it's over hydrated, but I guess we'll see. I'm gonna wet the face. If I gotta bring the, the brush back to the puck, I'm not gonna necessarily be too flustered about that. Oh, wonderful scent. What's the scent strength? Uh, this one is... This is pretty fragrant. I'm gonna give this one a four out of five on the sniff -o meter Not gonna lie, that was kind of unexpected. I didn't expect it to be that that strong of a scent. Rinse my hand off here. Try not to eat the soap. All right, let's see if I got enough in this brush. Here we go. Oh yeah, wonderful stuff. Hard pucks, like whenever I do, like mo most of my <laughs> off-camera shaves, I've been using like Leah, shaving pucks, the uh, original scent, or in some cases I've been using palm olive. Like in a lot of my off-camera shaves, I haven't even really been using artisan products lately. Oh, I think we might have a problem. It's looking like this is trying to dissipate. I'm just gonna try to aggressively work it up. See if I can get something with some staying power out of it. All right, that'll work for now. 
I probably could have lathered on top of the puck for a little bit longer, but people got places to be. So we'll see if we can make this work. All right, here is the Parker Solo Edge with a second use Gillette Silver Blue. Let's see how this goes. So far so good. I think the issue with the uh, the Solo Edge is that I necessarily don't even shave with it at the angle that I probably should. And so as a result, because uh, I'm coming in at, uh, this is kind of probably the angle you should probably be shaving with it. Well, I'm coming at it from a little bit of a steeper angle, and so that's giving me more blade. Because I'm the kind of shaver that I will tend to ride the base plate anyway. Well, with this one, you can't do that. This is very much a uh, top cap shaver where you really have to uh, kind of meet it at the right angle. Okay, a little bit of water. Put this on the face. The second pass is probably going to be pretty thin. Because I think I overwatered it. But, I mean, all I really need it to be is slick. So. And this soap currently has no problems doing that. Okay, let's go across the grain. Yeah, I think I didn't build up a rich enough lather. Because this is uh, trying to kind of air out and dissipate on me. I don't think that's the soap's fault though. I think uh, I really should have spent more time lathering onto the puck. See, like right here, I can feel that there's more hair there. But if I stay there for too long with this razor, it's too blade feel. I'm either going to get razor burn or I'm eventually going to nick myself in that area or both. So this is not a blade buffing razor. Without a doubt, it's not. I do think, however, that I might have found uh, the right blade combination for this. If I want to have a successful shave with this, I should probably be using Gillette Silver Blues. Which is weird because I haven't really felt like Gillette Silver Blues were anything crazy to write home about uh, before, but now... <laughs> I guess it would seem that I now have a interest in digging them out and using them. Because on most other razors I use, Gillette Silver Blues are just like, eh, they're fine. There are other blades I would rather be using. Alright, let's do a rinse and see how I did. This is definitely not a goofing around kind of razor. You want to get in there, get your shave, and get done. Just want to make sure there's not any glaringly obvious spots that I missed. Oh, let's talk about the scent. I keep reactivating my iPhone cheat sheet and then I don't talk about it. So, the scent on this, according to Fragrantica, 
is mint, rosemary, bergamot, lavender, oak moss, and sandalwood. It's actually classified, according to Fragrantikai, as an aromatic fougere. But it is definitely very lavender heavy. Lavender and rosemary and bergamot. It's a fresh lavender. Uh, which you don't get a lot of. Most lavender scents are either bright and sweet or dark and peppery. Uh, this is one, this one is kind of peppery and, uh, peppery and fresh, which is a weird combination. It's a peppery take on lavender that is also fresh from your mint and your bergamot and aromatic from the, the rosemary and the, the oak moss. That was Mirsol Plastique that I just put on. Great stuff from Mirsol. Oh, feels great, smells great. No nicks or cuts that I can see. Did I miss a huge spot right there? Oh man, that's a miss. There we go. Holy crap, that would have been awkward going out in public looking like that. All right, my final thoughts on Check and Speak, Oxford, and Cambridge. Is this something I could recommend for a purchase? Unfortunately, no. For a couple of reasons. One is, it's just expensive. So if you're not somebody who already lives in the UK and you can get it pretty easily, then I would say look for something else. Look for a new favorite lavender scent once you're your stash of fine lavender pour ohm runs out. I wouldn't try to chase this scent anymore because I don't think the metaphorical juice is worth the squeeze. Um, it's too early to tell if it's a bad soap, but it's certainly not the easiest thing in the world to lather. Uh, with the same amount of lathering and lathering it the same way, I would have gotten a much better lather out of like Leah Classic shaving soap pucks and those things are way cheaper than this. So when it comes down to where the rubber meets the road, I uh, I would say that this is uh, you're not you're not benefiting much from getting this. Rinse that brush out. I uh, so like the way I got mine was I was in London and I went into Harrods, the famous, the famous department store uh, in London, Harrods, and I picked this up. I just happened to be walking by it, and there it was. And so it was a it was a convenience thing for me. But if you gotta if you're living in the United States or Canada or something like that, and you gotta have this shipped in all the way from the UK, and it's already expensive on top of it, nah, I would say go ahead and pass on this one. Okay, that's the shave for today. It looks like a fairly good one. No gripes, complaints, or problems. Questions, comments, put them in the comment section of the video. Otherwise, until next time, this is Soap Thing telling you, shave like you mean it. Thanks for watching.